Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Dan Does Stuff. A subscriber asked me, said, Dan, can you do some hunting? I said, you know what, I definitely can do that. So on this episode, it's gonna be kind of twofold. I'll do a review on my camouflage, Predator camouflage, and show you what that is. Then I'll show you some shots from out in the field of me doing some hunting action. So let's start off with my bow. So I'm doing bow hunting right now. I used to gun hunt a lot, I've been gun hunting since I was 12 years old and I transferred over into archery probably six years ago and I fell in love with it, truly love it. I could spend a ton of time talking about setting up your bow, types of bow, arrows alone is a whole different discussion or I could really talk a lot about that. But I'll say that for another time. Quick rundown, I shoot a bear archery. This is the Carnage, it is 2014 bow. I love it. It's a single cam. It is fast, 70% let off. Shoot a whisker biscuit rest and a Cabela's sight on there. Currently have it set up for me is a 29 inch draw length. So that's measuring how long it draws out. And I shoot, it's, I think it's between 65 and 70 pounds weight, draw weight. It can zing them, that's for sure. Love that. Not gonna go in depth about this bow. My arrows that I shoot are Easton Helios Pro 340 spline. They are cut to 27 inches. And again, I could talk a ton about this. And a good resource if you really are getting into archery, I'll put it in the description, is Hunter's Friend. They have an archery university and a bunch of info about arrows, weights, spine, deflection, tons and tons of good information so you can make sure you buy the exact arrow that you need for your bow that's set up specifically for you. Or you can just go to a pro shop and they can do a lot of that for you. However, I kinda like to geek out, geek out a little bit and know what I'm doing so I can order exactly what I want. Another quick thing, the broadheads that I shoot, G5 Montax, Single one piece, this is the stainless steel ones, or this is the steel ones, I also have the stainless steel ones. You can't go wrong, these are not mechanical, you don't have to worry about failure, bulletproof broadheads. I like them a lot, I've always used them. I do have some Rage broadheads, have yet to use them deer hunting. I did use them turkey hunting, but I love these things. They, they are kind of a little bit louder flying through the air, but they get the job done. Every single deer I've shot, poof, blow through, right through those deer. That's a little bit on my bow and arrows and broadheads. Here's my release. This is personal preference of what everybody likes to use, but this is what I use. This is a Scott release. All right, now into the camouflage. I won't keep going on that. First, you gotta start off with what? Your base layers, what do you wear next to your skin? Next to skin, extremely important. I'm gonna disappear for a second. These are what I wear. First light, merino wool. Amazing, amazing fit. I actually like these things so much. I. Kind of wanted to get a pair not for hunting so I could wear them around the house because I look super awesome. My butt looks good and they're good for you dudes. Let's see here. Put your put your ween out there. Go, go to the bathroom. They're nice. These things are amazing. I always wear these hunting no matter what the temperature. Up top, guess what? Ninja style, exact same, matching. First light merino zip, quarter zip top. This is extra large. The reason why I have an extra large up top, I'm actually six foot one, 195 pounds currently. And I wore, got the extra large because underneath I do wear a fleet merino wool uh, top as well, just to double up because I do not want to get cold when I'm sitting in my stand, especially right about now. Well, now it's 45 degrees, it's warm out, which is crazy for almost end of November here in Minnesota, but I always wear two layers up top of this. Again, merino wool. If you do not know anything about merino wool, 
It is a God-given amazing fabric. It keeps you warm when it's wet, keeps you cool when you're hot, keeps you looking hot when you're not, because I need all the help I can get. But enough on that. Switching up, down to the bottom, your Sacaricos. These right here are made in Minnesota from a local company. These are actually alpaca socks. Now, alpaca is a little bit more superior than merino wool. It has a better, oh, what is it called? Some sort of ratio, I can't think of off the top of my head, but these are warmer than merino wool. Now, if you do a lot of walking, if you're walking out to your stand, one trick that I always use, let's say you have a far walk through a swamp or anything like that, wear a pair of thin sock liners, which are synthetic socks. Take those, wear those, put them on your boots, walk out to your stand. And what I usually will do then is take those sock liners off and they will be drenched wet. And then I put on my alpaca socks. What happens is when that sweat sits on there, sits on your feet, and then you go from sweaty to sitting in a cold stand and you're just freezing your butt off, you're going to get cold and your feet are going to get cold and it's just going to move its way up your body and just, you start getting the chills. Not good. Not good because then that big buck's going to walk by and you're going to be shaking like a freaking leaf in the tornado and you're going to miss that deer. Socks, extremely important. Now, before I get more into the camo, these are the boots I wear. These are Rockies. 200 or 1200 gram thin slit. I strictly wear these for hunting and that is it. I do not wear them for anything else. I try not to even touch concrete with them on. That is what I wear. These things have been awesome. I will tell you when you when, one trick I've learned is when you're walking out to your stand, you lace them up tight, but when you're sitting in your stand, loosen up the laces up top so you can increase that blood flow, the blood flow up your legs into your body. And it actually helps keep your feet warmer, longer, and I'll take any, any help I can get when it comes to feet. Okay, camel. Moving on. Okay, what I have here, here's the review on the Predator Camouflage. This is Brown Deception. And I love this pattern. This pattern works really good in early season when you still have some greens in the woods but it also works great in late season when you don't have the greens in the woods. Unless you have buckthorn like I do, and then you have green, those things are green almost all winter, it's nuts. But this breaks you up really, really well in a deer stand, as well as on the ground. I know Predator makes some other patterns which are better for the deer stands in late season where it's more grays and blacks, but if you want best of both worlds and you do maybe a little turkey hunting on top of that in spring, or early fall, this works great. Now, I, these bottoms are large and they fit me very, very well. I have about a 34 inch waist from like a Levi's stamp, jean standpoint, and these fit really well even with my merinos underneath. Now, moving up top, next thing I wear up top, when it starts to get really cold, I wear my fleece predator vest. This is such a good piece of clothing. It's thick, it's quiet, and it's warm. If you are a gun hunter and you're in blaze orange, you can put this on underneath. Actually, when I would go gun hunting, I would wear this underneath my blaze orange because it did keep my core body warmer. Keep your core warm, it'll keep your limbs and everything else warm as well. Love this piece of clothing. Next up is my other favorite, g -g 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 Gator, Neck Gator, also known as a buff. People call them a buff or there's a company called Buffs. This, guess what it's made out of? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> yes, Merino wool. This is Merino wool as well. I love this. I have, actually, I think I have three or four of these in different patterns. And I wear them year round. I wear them when I'm fishing in the summer. You can pull it up over your face. It's just a versatile piece that you can have. I mean, check it out. You can wear it like that. 
like do rag style baby cool and pull it down and just wear it around your neck like a like a scarf right or I always pull mine up when I'm hunting and you can sneak it down cool or you can Rambo style it maybe if you are still into wearing Visors with your hair popping out and your bleach tips Get that pop But it's amazing keeps you warm it seals in that around your neck where your collar comes up your jacket comes up Seals you up and keeps you nice and warm Awesome awesome piece of clothing Recommend this for anybody who doesn't hunt if you just are outside go jogging or you're a weekend warrior and you like to go shopping in the grocery store, wear one of these. It's awesome. Ice fishing too. I love wearing this for ice fishing. All right. Last couple. I can get them. My little box. Okay. Next up. Again, Marina wool skull cap. How's my hair look? Probably pretty silly. There you go. Always wear this. It's great early season to late season. However, when it gets late season, it really starts getting cold. What I do is I pair it up with my Predator fleece hat. This keeps you extra warm. Now, this Predator fleece hat, it's, it's on the big side. Totally on the big side, which is cool. It looks almost like a boonie hat in, in a sense. But it's nice because you can layer it like I'm layering it right now. And it keeps your head warm. Another very, very important factor to stay warm out in the woods. Keep your head, toes, fingers warm. All right. Lastly, I do not like shooting my bow without with wearing gloves at all. And I've tried different types of gloves in the past. And I just didn't like it. I always like to feel the bow. The problem is... For you bow hunters, even gun hunters, you'll know when you have your hand on that, whether it be plastic or wood, it just goes right through you and your fingers just start getting numb. And talking about trying to pull either a trigger on a release or a trigger on your gun, it you lose feeling. So I, I have put like hot hands in my pockets, so I'd always keep my hands in my pockets, but I always like to be on the ready because you never know what's going to happen when you're hunting. Deer can walk up and you and it's like, whoa, got to make a shot. I did pick up these Predator gloves just so I can totally matchy-matchy my outfit. Because I want to look cool. Because that's what matters. No, it doesn't. Function. It's all about function. These are nice. I know they said that these on the website that these fingers enable you to touch your cell phone screen. I don't know if it's just my cell phone personally because I have a screen protector on it, but it doesn't work for me, FYI. But these are warm, they fit well. These are a the medium, medium large, I think, size. And I don't have super big like bear mitts, but they fit well, because I mean, you don't want it loose material when you're trying to work your bow. And lastly, I use Dead Down Wind exclusively across the board, deodorant, toothpaste, body wash, beard wash, and then this is their field spray where I'm always spraying on my boots, on my clothes before I go out in the field. It's good stuff, and that they have the packets that come with it, and you just mix it with water. I mean, you, you really can't go wrong. Well, there you have it. There's my gear. Can't say enough, enough good things about the Predator camouflage. Oh, I did want to tell you that my top was an extra large jacket. It is big, but when you're layering on the different clothes, it keeps you a lot warmer. There's one thing I'm missing from my kit, which is a pair of fleece pants. I did not show those. That is another essential tool that you need to keep your legs warm. But all in all, Predator Camel, love the stuff. Now I'll get some shots out in the field and see what we can come up with. Thanks. All right, we're walking to the stand. Got trails cut. I am in an urban area. This is in the deep woods. I have trails cut. Ooh. 
so fun. It's actually pretty warm right now. 45 degrees. Evening hunt. Get to my stand here. All right, we're almost to my stand. Here we go. Gotta get my bow tied up on my string and I'll climb up. shot a buck this year but any deer I see I'll try to get them on camera and if we see any coyotes it's game time laying the hammer down we'll be back. nothing so far that's hunting got a couple more minutes till no more shooting we'll see if something walks up We are back in the studio. Kind of want to recap that hunt. I didn't get that much video for you all just because I did not see that much. I did see three does. They were further out in that swamp from that video shot, but they're way, way too far out there for me to even get a good video to show you all. But what I'll do is I'll continue to go out and just hunt some mornings and evenings and see if I can get some bucks on camera. I did already shoot a deer this year or I antlered buck, so I can't get another one in the state of Minnesota. But if I do see some coyotes, stuff like that, I'll definitely take it out, take them out and see if I can get a video of that. But here is the deer that I got this year. And I'm sorry, I did not get a video of this. It was actually the second time I went out and I was thoroughly surprised. He walked right behind me and I could not pass him up. Beautiful 10 pointer, blessed with another deer this year. There you have that one. And I did the same thing as I did in last year's buck, European mount, followed the exact same process on my other video, and it turned out slick, really easy. And what I'll do is I'll bury this head and get it all kind of cleaned up and then bleach it out. Well, there you have it. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe, like, comment. If there's anything else you want to see, shoot me a message. This hunting video was somebody, one of my subscribers like, hey, Dan, I want to see some hunting. So there you have it, little hunting action.
Hope you enjoyed and see you next time.